Greetings, 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 and salutations, one and all. <laughs> Welcome to the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. It's Healthy Love Night. And we're kicking it up with his own Trisha Hamilton track called Bite Me. I want to say much love to everybody locked in right now from wherever you are. Thank you to those on TuneIn Radio locked in on the night shift to DJ Kevin Steele. I want to say big ups to those who are locked in on uh, NIE Radio to New Jersey with the motivator. And much love to the massive over there in New Jersey. Blessings to those who are locked in out of New York. Those on Island Worldwide exhibiting the power of music. Chad and Nicole. Gary. The Jump Out Production crew. Much love to you. I want to say big ups to those who are locked in out of Long Island, New York. Hanging out with Reggae Pulse Radio. DJ Atomic Force on the crew. Quite explosive over there. I want to say thank you to those who are locked in on the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. Much love, Mr. Lindsay. Those who are locked in on PEMGTV.com, welcome. Those on Clubhouse. Those on Facebook Live. Those on YouTube Live. And of course, those right here at the home of the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew, KevinStew.com, where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you. Couldn't do it without you. You have my word, I wouldn't even try. Wanna say thank you to my segment sponsors. The Pulsey Media Group and being in a moment is priceless. Let's go ahead and give them a call. They'll take your videos, your photos, your streaming, your ads. Everything you see here on KevinStew.com and more. You ask nicely enough, they'll even host your website. They do mine. You have an event you want to stream live on a secure platform of the yours or theirs? Let's go ahead and get them a call. 754 1140 That's 754-999-1140. Tell them you heard about them on the night shift with DJ Kevin Steele. I want to say thank you to Althea and her healing heavenly hands. Althea is a licensed massage therapist, operational top broad county, North Miami and South Palm Beach counties. She comes to you, bringing her table, her oils, and over 20 years massage therapy experience. Go ahead and give her a call today. Schedule your appointment 954 655 9000. She only has one request outside of paying her. It is that you get off her table and go sleep somewhere else when she's done. Because you're guaranteed to fall asleep after she gets those healing hands on you. I want to say thank you to Reggae Global Entertainment. Reggae Global will, book, will be your booking agents, handle your tour management. <laughs> Take your business registration, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and even your event planning. Go ahead and give them a call, 954-804-8199. That's 954-804-8199. Check them out online at reggaeglobal.com. Thank you to Matt Neal Trucking. With Matt Neal Trucking, your goods are in good hands. They're a veteran-owned, licensed, and insured mover in the state of Florida. 
So you wanna move from the Keys up to Jacksonville? You wanna move from Naples to Palm Beach? From Pompano to Pensacola? And all points in between. You wanna put some things in storage? Just give them a call. 9544069740. It gets you in touch with Mike Neal Trucking. And call them up today. And tell them Kevin Steele sent you. And you heard about them on the night shift with DJ Kevin Steele. If you're just joining us, then don't worry, you haven't missed anything yet. In the background, we saw on Trisha Hamilton, a track called Bite Me. As usual, I need to let you know the phone line is open. And the number to use to get you in touch, 773-789-STU. Scrolling across the bottom of your screen right now for those of you that are watching. It's 773-789-7839. You can call, you can text, you can WhatsApp, you can telegram. It gets you right here in the studio. Live and in living color. And of course you can jump into the stew pot. If you're wondering what a stew pot is, it's what others call a chat room. But because we're fancy on KevinStew.com, we call it the Stew Party. It's where we keep things interactive and bubbling. So just go to KevinStew.com. You don't need to register. You don't need to offer your firstborn an internal organ or a blood sacrifice. Just go to KevinStew.com and you're there. You can remain anonymous. You can put your name. Well, that way we get a little bit more personal, yeah? But you're only asked to remain respectful of others and the broadcast. Go ahead and call your friends, tell your friends, friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too. Because information is good for everybody. It's Healthy Love Night. And tonight we're talking about a high fat diet and pain. Now, some people are going, wait, what? High fat and pain? What, how do, what do those two have in common? Why should that be the topic of discussion? Who wants to talk about fat? Well, here's the thing. Fat is a part of our diet. And it's here to stay. Because just like you have good things and great things in life you have not so good and not so great things and sometimes they're different sides of the same coin sometimes as it relates to fat it is one of those things that you we really can't do without because you're you have your good fat and you have your not so good fat Right now, the, well, and it, it has been for a while, the UK government guidelines, according to NHS.UK, advise cutting down on all fats and replacing saturated fat with some unsaturated fat. But you need to cut down on all fat. Too much fat in your diet, especially saturated fats, these can raise your cholesterol, which increases the risk of heart disease. And let's face it. You could hear about this virus, that virus, the next virus. When it comes to killers, you're talking about heart disease. Still top of the food chain. So, you know, let's pay attention to what we're doing to ourselves. What are we putting in our bodies? How are we treating our bodies? A small amount of fat is an essential part of a healthy, balanced diet. 
Fat is a source of essential fatty acids, which the body cannot make itself. Fat helps the body absorb vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin E. These vitamins are fat soluble. If you don't have fat, well, you'll have difficulty absorbing these vitamins. Any fat that is not used by your body's cells or turned into energy is converted into body fat. And likewise, unused carbohydrates and proteins are also converted into body fat. All types of fat are high in energy. A gram of fat, whether it is saturated or unsaturated, provides 9 um, kilojoules of, well, actually, it provides 37 kilojoules of, of, of energy compared with 17 kilojoules of carbohydrate and protein. You get that? Let me say it again. One gram of fat saturated or unsaturated provides 37 kilojoules of energy which is a measurement energy is 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 you is used to it is yeah the measurement for energy the amount of energy that is displaced is is measured in in kilojoules and so saturated or unsaturated fat you're talking about one gram 37 kilojoules one gram of carbohydrate or one gram of, pro of protein, 17 kilojoules. So it gives a lot of energy. And the main types of fat are found in food. Well, the main types that are found in food, they are, are, are saturated and unsaturated. The question is, which one are you going for? Most fats and oils contain both saturated and unsaturated fats in different proportions. As part of a healthy diet... You should try to cut down on foods and drinks that are high in saturated fats and trans fats and replace them with some of some of them with unsaturated fats. Now, saturated fats are found in many foods, both sweet and savory. Most of them come from animal sources, including meat and dairy products as well as some plant food, such as palm oil and coconut oil. Foods high in saturated fats include fatty cuts of meat, meat products, including sausages and pies, yes, pies, butter, ghee, lard, cheese, especially hard cheese like cheddar cheese, Cream, sour cream, ice cream, savory snacks like cheese crackers and some popcorns. Not all popcorns are created equal. Chocolate confectionery, biscuits, cakes, pastries, palm oils, coconut oil, and coconut cream. Cholesterol is a fatty substitutes fatty substance that that mostly is made by the body in the liver it's carried in the blood as ldl low density lipoprotein or hdl high density lipoprotein eating too much saturated fats in your diet can raise the bad cholesterol in your blood which is the LDL. And this can increase the risk of heart disease and stroke, which are really up there as your main killers. Your good cholesterol or your HDL has a positive effect by taking cholesterol from parts of the body where there is too much of it and transporting it to the liver, where it is disposed of. Most people in the UK eat too much saturated fats. The government recommends that men should not eat more than 30 grams of saturated fat a day, 
women, they should not eat more than 20 grams of saturated fat a day. And children should have even less. So, those of you guys that are listening on One Harmony Radio out of the UK, King Genius, Queen Genius, much love to you. Big up yourselves. Um, you guys should be really paying attention because this bit of information is coming from you. Trans fats are found naturally at low levels in some foods and such as meat and dairy products. They can also be found in partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. Hydrogenated vegetable oil must be declared on a food's ingredients list before, well, if it is included. So, you know, people talk about reading labels and how important it is to do so. This is one of the reasons why. Like saturated fats, trans fats can raise cholesterol levels in the blood. And the government recommends that adults should not have more than 5 grams of trans fat a day. Just 5. However, most people in the UK do not eat a lot of trans fats on average. They eat about half the recommended maximum. Most of the supermarkets in the UK have removed partially hydrogenated vegetable oil from all their own brand products. People in the UK tend to eat a lot more saturated fats than trans fats. This means that when you're looking at the amount of fat in your diet, it's more important, <clears throat> excuse me, it's more impo important to focus on reducing the amount of saturated fats. Hey, Pat, how are you doing? Happy New Year to you. Missed you last night. Um, I, 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 I did not get drunk for the New Year. No, haven't done so yet. Actually, haven't done so in all my life, to be honest. <laughs> I'm one of those few people that have never been drunk. Tipsy, but never been drunk. Um... So you, you, you stayed in, indoors for your new year? Well, glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. I'm glad that you're, you're in good spirits and welcoming in the 2023 as best as you can. All right, so we're, for, in case you missed it, Pat, tonight we're talking about um, high-fat diets and pain. And there are other people that, that don't know of a connection with the two or never heard of a connection with the two. And so we're making somewhat of a connection tonight and trying to focus on the importance of recognizing the fact that we're putting in our bodies. If you want to reduce your risk of heart disease... It is best to reduce your overall fat intake and swap saturated fats for unsaturated fats. There's good evidence that replacing saturated fats with some unsaturated fats can help to lower your cholesterol levels. Mostly found in oils from plants and fish, unsaturated fats can be either monosaturated or polyunsaturated. Uh, Kujo, much love to you, bro. How you doing, man? Welcome to the broadcast. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put the link over there on Facebook, did I? Uh, let me just go that and do that real quick, so that when we're leaving Facebook Live, everybody will know where to go. So it's KevinStew.com, and it will be pinned in the comment section for you guys that are watching on Facebook Live. So you can come on over to KevinStew.com when we take the break, and we say goodbye to Facebook Live. It's in the comments. It's on on um. It's in the description on Clubhouse. So just just follow the link and come on over to KevinStew.com and we go off on the break because we're gonna part company with you guys on on Facebook and Clubhouse. Um. Okay, Pat, olive oil is best in cooking. Not so much. Olive oil breaks down 
easily with heat. So it is best as actually a salad dressing. Coconut oil is better for cooking because it, 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 it's more tolerable, more tolerant of high temperatures. And so it doesn't break down as much. So when you're cooking with olive oil, you want to use it to do things like if you're doing a, a, a quick saute, um, a light saute, not, nothing that is going to have excess heat for extended periods of time because you lose the, the qualities of olive oil with excessive heat over time. So you're better off using a, a more solid structured oil like coconut oil if you're going to be cooking for extended periods of time on heat um da -da 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 -da. yes kujo much love to you bro happy new year to you and um blessings to you also and to your family much love much love now mono unsaturated fats actually help protect your heart by maintaining levels of HDL cholesterol, which is your good cholesterol, while reducing levels of LDL, the bad cholesterol that is in your blood. Monounsaturated fats are found in olive oil, repressed oil, sorry, um, rapeseed oil or rapeseed oil. Actually, I'm not familiar with that oil. And spreads made from these oils are also high in monounsaturated fats. Avocados have monounsaturated fat. Some nuts, uh, such as almonds and Brazil nuts and peanuts, these have um, monounsaturated oils or monounsaturated fats in them. So these are good for you. Your polyunsaturated fats can also help to lower the levels of bad cholesterol in your blood. It lowers the levels of, of LDL. And there are two main types of polyunsaturated fats, your omega-3s and your omega-6s. Some types of omega-3 and omega-6 fats cannot be made by your body, which means it is essential to include small amounts of them in your diet. Again, um, some sources of your omega-6 fats are found in vegetable oils, like your rapeseed oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, and some nuts. Omega-3s are found only in oily fish, like kippers, herring, trout, sardines, salmon, and mackerel and most people get enough omega-6s in their diet but it's recommended to have more omega-3 by eating at least two portions of fish each week with one portion being an oily fish vegetable sources of omega-3 fats are not thought to, to have some the same benefits on heart health as those found in in in, in fish and, well, one of the interesting things about some of these fish that are rich in, in omega-3 fats, when I was growing up, it was, you were almost scorned if you were having sardines or mackerel. Salmon? Not so much, because somehow salmon was more of, of a uptown kind of fish. And sardines and mackerel was your downtown kind of fish. Not to mention herring. But herring was interesting because if you had some crackers and red herring, then everybody was in on it. <laughs> what they used to call it? Uh, Salomon Grundy? And so you have these fish. And, and, and when I was growing up, these, the sardines and the mackerel, and to some extent, the herring, you know, people would, would 
turn up their noses because you you had these fish in your possession or this was the fish meal that you were having versus the the um snapper if you're gonna have fish you you, you, you are supposed to have some parrot fish or some snapper or some goat fish you know some of the expensive fish and salmon and so without recognizing the quality of fish that you're consuming because of the benefits to the human body they looked at other things and turned up their noses and caused people to even shy away from it but let me tell you something get your mackerel get your sardines get your herring get your salmon and eat to your heart's content because those omega-3 fats these are some of the best places to get them so anybody want to have a problem with it let that be their problem you just make sure you take care of your heart because whereas they are going to go get some junk food and kill themselves you're going to eat this food and live a long healthy life the nutrition labels on food package on food packaging can help you to cut down on on total fat and saturated fat and nutrition information can be presented in different ways on the front and back of packaging now something to note here packaging of food in the uk versus packaging of food in in the united states are two different types of packaging because when it comes to labeling whereas the uk laid down certain laws and said no more in the u.s it's like they said okay you don't want it more for us and no we're not putting it on the labels and if we do it's a choice and you have to make sure you read the fine print on the label to find it and so we in the u.s are more exposed to the danger of the food that we're consuming however we don't recognize it why because we don't pay enough attention um halibut yeah you like halibut pat yeah go ahead yes yes get it in get it in and um so yesterday he made some salad with onions and garlic and avocado and olive oil look at that a, a, a diet rich in the good ldl yes your 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 good cholesterol levels you know it must your your body must be thanking you right now because you're helping to support your heart health with a, a, a good serving of LDL when it comes to total fat you have high fat which is more than 17.5 grams of fat per 100 kilogram sorry per 100 gram you have low fat which is 3 grams of fat or less per 100 gram or 1.5 grams of fat per 100 milliliter for liquids and 1.8 grams of fat per 100 milliliter for semi skimmed milk fat free you're talking about 0 0.5 grams of fat or less per 100 grams or 100 milliliters saturated fat high in saturated fat is more than 5 grams of saturates per 100 gram low in saturated fat is 1.5 grams of saturates or less per 100 grams or 0.75 grams per 100 milliliters for liquids and saturated fat free is 0.1 gram of saturates per, per 100 gram or 100 milliliter when it comes to 
a product to be labeled lower fat, reduced fat, light or light, L-I-T-E or L-I-G-H-T, it must contain at least 30% less fat than a similar product. But if the type of food in question is usually high in fat, the lower fat version may still be high in fat. It may still be a high fat food. 17.5 grams or more of fat per 100 grams is still high fat. An example being a low fat mayonnaise may contain 30% less fat than the standard version, but it is still high in fat. And a lot of people don't look at mayonnaise as something that is fatty, but it is. Foods that are lower in fat are not necessarily low in calories either. Sometimes the fat is replaced with sugar and the food may end up having a similar energy content to the regular version. To be sure of the fat and energy content, remember to check the nutrition label on the packet. And if you don't know how to read labels, learn. Cutting down on fat is only one aspect of achieving a healthy diet. Just one. And there are many more out there. And on that note, I, I should make mention of Nurse Marv O'Reilly's new book. As we go off on a break, I, I, I should mention Marv O'Reilly's new book. And I'll, I'll put it up on the screen for you right now. Here you go. Lose weight and keep it off for good. And y'all can visit her website to order your copy of this book. And the website is rnmarvoreilly.com, if my memory serves me correctly. I'm, I'm really just winging it. Or rn, yeah, rnmarvoreilly.com. Check it out. Get your copy of this book. It's available right now. Lose weight and keep it off for good. And, you know, sometimes this is what we need to just turn things around as it relates to our health, just to lose some weight. In addition to that book, I recommend you get the audio book, which I narrated, which is Empowered, Essential Concepts and Strategies Every Woman Should Know About Self-Defense. It's authored by Jonathan Field, narrated by me. And a quick way to get it is to visit kevinstew.com. Those of you that are watching right here on kevinstew.com, just scroll up to the top of the page and you will see a picture of the cover of this book. Just click on it and it takes you to where you can download your copy today. You can get it from Audible. If you have an Audible account, you just search for it. Empowered Essential Concepts and Strategies Every Woman Should Know About Self-Defense. Authored by Jonathan Field. Narrated by yours truly, Kevin Stew. So get your copy today. Those of you on Clubhouse, those on your Facebook, we're going to part company with you guys as we take this break. Everybody else, stick and stay where you are. Or come on over to kevinstew.com for the remainder of the broadcast. Pulse Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30-second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one, get one free, or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30-second video with music, or a voiceover, or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Add Sheer TV, part of Pulsing Media Group. Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. 
Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. Or maybe he's teething. Maybe it's just a phase. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Ladies, lovers, lovers of the music, it is here. The brand spanking new album from Ed Robinson and Ian Sweetness, a tribute to Teddy Pendergrass. Amazing. Turn off the light. Ten blazing tracks two amazing singers going hit for hit classic for classic a tribute to teddy pendergrass ian sweetness and robinson oh man is out now available everywhere itunes spotify wherever you get your music it is there a tribute to teddy pendergrass brand spanking new in sweetness and robinson ladies gentlemen you've got to have this in your collection get it now available everywhere bruv my last baby already gone off to college mate is what this is saying come give me man is a big album still i love it Big up Ed Robinson, Ian Sweetness, but this better come with a contraceptive. It's Christine representing for DJ Kevin. You see me, I say, I don't know the boss. You see me, I say, DJ Kevin's two on the night shift radio show. Yo, it thing, at the thing, turn up the thing loud. Whoa, DJ Kevin's two on the heart of a champion. Never underestimate, just chose him. The silver line behind the dark clouds. DJ Kevin's to be living and that's no doubt. Sell out the night shift with a show up with Sid. This is hard to talk. Loud. For the beast. It's been a long time coming. Are you ever gonna change? Are you ever gonna to take advice for how I'm feeling? It's been a long time running. And I know you wanna stay. So I think that it is time we live like we used to. Right all around the city. The top down, let's take it back to when we were younger. It's been a long time coming, so put on a happy face. Grab my hand so we can let all of our troubles out. There's no cares tonight. Take me for a ride. Even when the stars have a wind, even when it's dark and you're losing your mind. Track is called Madness. Artist goes by the name Royce. And she says, 
right in the moment when your head is confused I will stay right there in the madness with you And you best believe that when it comes to food on our tables and our foods on the shelves from the grocery stores that we favorite or we, we frequent, it's a little bit of a game and can be a crazy game to play. It's a game where manufacturers are trying to make the most of of their business because everybody is in business to turn a profit so the game is to put everything out there and let the people choose what they want with the hope that they choose your product whether it is good for them or not they just you give the people what they want and then the people can start to whichever way they choose. Now, some of these things that they have been choosing has been they have been doing more harm than good. And so our topic tonight, the title of our broadcast, is High Fat Diet and Pain. And again, a lot of people would ask, okay, so what does fat have to do with pain? Back in 2012, WebMD put out an article which spoke to obesity and pain. And it asked the question, does obesity cause pain? And in the article, they said there was a study, a large study, that shows that obesity and pain often go hand in hand. And it appears to be true even if an obese person is otherwise healthy. Researchers say that begs some questions. Can extra pounds cause pain? And if so, how does fat make us hurt? A slew of chronic conditions that cause pain are also more common in people who are overweight and obese. And those conditions include arthritis, depression, fibromyalgia, type 2 diabetes, and back pain. So the assumption has been that being obese makes a person more likely to have multiple medical problems and many of these conditions may cause pain. The survey, however, which included responses from more than 1 million Americans, found that the relationship between obesity and pain persisted even after researchers tried to account for the influences of other pain-causing health problems. Being sick can cause pain, but that doesn't necessarily take care of the relationship between obesity and pain, says researcher Arthur Stone, who is a PhD and distinguished professor and vice chairman at the time of the Department of Psychiatry at the Stony Brook University Medical Center in Stony Brook, New York. For the study, Researchers relied on data collected by telephone surveys conducted by the Gallup organization from 2008 to 2010. The majority of survey participants were white, which were about 85% of them, and had at least a high school education. Every, every survey participant was asked to report their height and weight. Based on that information, 36.8% of the people in the study fell in the low or normal body mass index category. 38.3 were considered overweight and 24.9 were considered obese. People were asked if they experienced physical pain the previous day. They were also asked if they had ne had neck, back, leg, or knee conditions that had caused pain during the last 12 months, or if they experienced any other condition that caused recurrent pain. They were also asked about the presence of a variety of other medical conditions, including high blood pressure, high cholesterol, asthma, diabetes, heart attack, and depression. Researchers found that as weight increased, 
so did the likelihood that a person would be experiencing pain. Compared to normal weight people in the survey, people in the overweight group, those with BMIs between 25 and 29, had about 20% more pain. People with BMIs between 30 and 34 had about 68% more pain. Those with BMIs between 35 and 39 had a 136% more pain. And those with BMIs over 40 reported having 254% more pain. As expected, chronic pain conditions accounted for a good portion of those results. And researchers recognize that the relationship between chronic health problems and pain and obesity are complex. In some cases, it could be that having arthritis makes a person less likely to move around, which makes them more likely to gain weight. In others, it may be that being overweight puts a strain on the joints, which leads to joint problems that cause pain. When researchers accounted for the influences of other health problems, and pain-causing conditions, being overweight was no longer associated with being in pain. Well, I guess this is the way that you can argue away anything, right? But people who were obese still reported more pain than those with normal BMIs. Researchers caution that their findings are just an association. They don't prove that fat alone causes pain. Here's the thing, though. The people that were not overweight or obese had less cases of these conditions that caused pain. So if you're going to say that it's the condition that is causing them to have pain and, and to, to, to be ob obese, then which one came first? The obesity or a condition? And if the condition came first... What are the causes of the condition? Because here's the thing. Some of these conditions are caused by fatty food. So, whereas the person experiencing the pain may not have yet become overweight, the fat that they're consuming is causing the problem. So, maybe, just maybe, the researchers at the time didn't take that into consideration and they just looked at the end result. But I digress. They mirror a handful of other smaller studies that have also found links between pain and obesity, even when there were no other chronic conditions to explain the findings. So they say it makes sense that there might be other mechanisms connect it to having a lot of fatty tissue or to problems with the body met body's metabolism that might explain the pain. So, can fat cause pain? Well, this 2012 study wasn't able to explain how fat might cause pain. But Stone says that fat cells are known to make chemicals that increase inflammation. And we know that inflammation is very closely linked to pain perception. So there's a possibility that there's some connection through that kind of process. And he says those questions will ultimately need to be addressed by other researchers. But this was back in 2012. Has there been any more research? Are there any conditions that we might have heard about that associate being overweight and being in pain or even being obese and being in pain the question is yes one such condition is called lipedema ever heard of it it's a relatively common fat disorder that is often mistaken for simple obesity it is clinically it, it, its clinical diagnosis is an adipose tissue disorder or a lipid metabolism disorder. A typical lipidemia patient is a woman who struggles with large hips and legs, usually out of proportion to the rest of her body. Lipidema 
also appears in the upper arms. One of the hallmarks of the disease is that lipedema fat is relatively unresponsive to diet and exercise. These measures may lead to weight loss in other areas, but the size of the hips and legs remain disproportionately large. Lipedema is both an excess buildup of fat cells in a particular area and the, exp the expansion of those fat cells. Swelling in the interstitial tissue, interstitial fluid between the cells may increase during the day in patients with lipedema but does not usually cause pitting edema. Patients often complain of tenderness or pain in the fat and report that they are easily bruised. Lipedema is little recognized in the United States medical community and many women go undiagnosed for years. So here it is. You have this condition where you have fat cells and the fat cells actually hurt. Yeah. Crazy, right? But yet still, here you have some scientists doing this survey and coming to the conclusion that, hey, we can't say that fat causes pain because these conditions that these people were surveyed, they could have been in pain, which caused them to become overweight because of lack of movement, because they're in so much pain. Well, explain this. It's called lipedema. And I understand we're talking about women being affected by this condition and it being often overlooked. But does that mean that it doesn't exist in men? Hmm. Well, maybe we can find out when we get a little bit deeper into the information as it relates to this. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, we talk some more about a high fat diet and pain. Are ultimately fat and pain, are they linked? Is being overweight linked to being in pain? Do you know anyone who is overweight who doesn't complain of being in pain? Well, if you do, let's talk. Not to say, if you're overweight, you must be in pain. But what is the source of your pain? When did the pain start? Did you have these pains all your life? You know, some of these questions come into play. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. It's Christine representing for DJ Kevin. You see me, I say, I don't know the boss. You see me, I say. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. Making great music is one thing, sharing it with the world, that's another. Let the professionals at Reggae Global Entertainment help you to another level. Specializing in artist management, booking, public relations and marketing, and promotion. Reggae Global Entertainment can help you with event planning, websites, photography, and video production, press releases, legal services, and graphic design. They can even help you with music production so you can get the sound that you want every time. 
Call Reggae Global Entertainment at 954-804-8199. That's 804-8199. Or visit them online at reggaeglobalentertainment.com. MRE Entertainment, in association with VPAL Distribution, presents the brand new hit single. Hi, I'm Robert French, and you're listening to my new song, Every Day of My Life. Now available on all major digital platforms. Every day of my life will be loving you. When being in the moment is priceless, consider the ability to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse E-Media Group has the tools you need. Weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. Pulse E-Media Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse e Media Group, when being in the moment is priceless. This is Gia Yee, and you're listening to The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew. Look and It's cooking. Yeah, the pot always cooking up something good, you know. The sound of Jadon. Track called Cooking. One of 
welcome you back to the broadcast. It's healthy love right here on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Looking at a high fat diet and pain. Is there any connection? Is there anything to link the two? Well, there is a connection between being overweight or being obese and pain. And there is even a condition that causes pain and obesity. It's called lipedema. Now, some of the trademarks of lipedema is the excess deposition and expansion of fat cells in an abnormal and particular pattern in the legs. There is usually bilateral and symmetrical, which is both legs fairly even, swelling of the legs and hips extending from the waist to the ankles, with the fat forming a ring or cuff just above the ankle. The feet are usually unaffected. Lipedema may occur in the upper arms as well. Now, lipedema occurs almost exclusively in women. There are a few rare cases where lipedema has been diagnosed in men. Lipedema is resistant to diet and exercise. And although diet and exercise can help both pain and with both pain and mobility they are unlikely to change the disproportionate size of the legs or arms for lipedema patients in any significant way lipedema can occur in women of all sizes ranging from seriously overweight underweight sorry to morbidly obese being thin is not a guarantee that someone does not have lipedema lipedema seems to have a genetic component in some families it is inherited through a a maternal lineage so a grandmother mother and daughter might all have lipedema males can be carriers so daughters can inherit the condition from a paternal lineage lipedema is thought to be affected by hormones some women see the first signs of lipedema around puberty Others first show symptoms around pregnancy or perimenopause. Causes of lipedema have have also appeared following gynecological surgery or after major trauma or surgery. These triggers are predominantly periods of major stress and or hormonal disturbance. Not many of us have taken into consideration how much stress can cause some conditions which we don't pay attention to, like this one, lipedema. And lipedema is more common than you think. Estimates of the incidence of lipedema vary widely, ranging as high as 11% of the post-puberty female population. And that would mean close to 17 million women in the United States alone and as many as 350 million women worldwide. Now, there are four stages of lipedema. It is a progressive disease. Not all patients have lipedema that worsens over time, but many do. And proper diagnosis and treatment for lipedema can prevent or slow the progression. It can help retain mobility and decrease pain. In stage 1, the skin surface can be smooth with enlarging subcutaneous fat tissue. There can be swelling that comes and goes depending on various circumstances like nutrition, intake, and weather conditions. And there can be coughs at the ankles. In stage 2, the skin surface is uneven with indentations. There can be the development of nodules in the subcutaneous fat tissue, feeling like beans in a bag. There is visible dimpling of the skin. There can be increasing tenderness and pain, and there can be coughs at the ankles. In stage 3, The skin surface increasingly indents 
with deformations caused by fat growth. There can be large masses of skin and fat that create folds and overhangs, especially at the hips, thighs, and knees. Ankle cuffs are usually present. When lymphedema develops, there can be subcutaneous tissue. Excuse me. There can be subcutaneous tissue thick. Excuse me again. <laughs> wow. I might need a fan on in this room. Um, there can be subcutaneous tissue thickening and uh, honeycomb appearance to the tissue due to fluid buildup and subcutaneous fat. Pain and tenderness can worsen considerably during this stage with increasing immobility. In stage 4, the progression of lipedema advances to include a significant compromise of the lymphatic, lymphatic system and resulting in lymphedema, referred to as lipolymphedema. Now, there can be debilitating lobules of skin and fat, typically on the medial thighs and knees, that significantly limit, limit mobility. And this is where you have immobility caused by obesity. But the obesity caused by a hormonal or stress-triggered condition versus food now the swelling can be persistent and there are profuse cuffs at the ankles and that's the fourth stage of lipedema now there are five types of lipedema you have type one that shows up in the buttocks type two shows in the buttocks hips thighs up to the knees type 3 has the buttocks hips thighs calves up to the knees and feet are calves up to the ankles sorry and um, the feet are speared type 4 has includes the upper arms and all that is in type 3 and type 5 includes the calves and knees to the ankles so those are your, your five types of lipedema. And they all come with pain. So is fat linked to pain? Well, definitely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Definitely when lipedema comes into play. But where does it come into play with a diet can there be a high fat diet where you point to it you, you pinpoint the diet being the cause of the pain well according to medical news today diet being a crucial component of health of course has researchers constantly uncovering new data about how diet influence the body. One area of interest is how a high fat diet contributes to pain and inflammatory responses. A recent study in, published in scientific reports explored how high fat diets included, sorry, induced pain responses in mice to non-painful stimuli. The study results indicate that high-fat diets could induce pain responses to non-painful stimuli, a similar effect that may be seen in individuals with obesity or type 2 diabetes. Now, the findings raise caution about high-fat diets and how they may contribute to chronic pain. People's diets require at least some fat. We have established that, and we looked at that early in the broadcast. To ensure, and this is to ensure the body functions optimally. Lipids allow the body to store energy and help with protection and cell structure. 
However, too much fat can lead to potential problems. Example, consuming excess saturated fat can increase the risk of heart disease, which is, let's face it, a number one killer of anybody, anywhere. While dietary recommendations are generally geared toward healthier food choices, many people are still consuming high levels of saturated fat and following high fat diet trends, particularly in the United States. Researchers are still working to understand the full impact of high fat diets and how these diets may contribute to the body's response to pain. Laura Simmons, RDN, a registered dietitian nutritionist with RET physical therapy and healthcare specialists in Washington, not involved in the study, said to Medical News Today, We already know that high-fat diets can be inflammatory to our systems due to the increase in inflammatory markers, increase in plaque formation in arteries and deposits of fat if the high-fat diet is contributing to a caloric surplus. We have not had a great understanding of the relationship between inflammation and chronic pain and specifically the role of food. Well, probably because when it comes to food in the United States, it is pretty much the center of life, so to speak. But it is also a key ingredient to the money-making pharmaceutical industry. You know, curse me out if you want to. Um, but the information is there. So, am I saying something that is slanderous? Am I making things up? No. The information is there. And if you don't know it, you need to start looking. Pay attention. Researchers of the current study were interested in the relationship between high-fat diets and the body's pain response. And they noted that previous research demonstrated that high-fat diets can increase pain sensitivity. But they wanted to see if high-fat diets could induce a pain response to non-painful stimuli. Specifically, researchers wondered whether a pain response could happen in cases with no diabetes or obesity involved. And, you know, that's the kind of question that I would ask too. Previous studies have looked at the relationship of high-fat diets with mice who were obese and had diabetes. But this recent study took out further variables and was able to start identifying the direct connection of diet on chronic pain. Researchers conducted the study using groups of mice that were fed different diets. They fed some mice a standard chow diet while others received a high-fat diet over eight weeks. In this time frame, the the mice on on the high-fat diet did not develop obesity or hyperglycemia. The mice who received the high-fat diet had a much higher mechanical allodynia response. Now, allodynia involves experiencing pain in response to non-painful stimuli. I don't know how it was that they figured out that these mice were in pain. If they understand what what do mice talk? Mysic? Um but if if they understand how the mice responded to pain, but somehow these scientists knew that the mice were in pain. Now the study indicates you don't need obesity to trigger pain. You don't need diabetes. You do not need pathology or injury at all. According to study author Michael Burton, PhD assistant professor of cellular and molecular neuroscience at the University of Texas at Dallas in a press release. He goes on to say, eating a high fat diet for a short period of time is enough. 
A diet similar to what almost all of us in the US eat at some point. Not some of us, all of us. Which probably would explain why the the pain meds industry does so well. Now, the study opens up further discussions about the influence of pain, of diet on pain response. Its main limitation is that it was a study using mice. So a limited amount of the data applies to humans. We must be cautious not to jump to conclusions when studies are done on animals, Simmons noted. Saying, however, this study does show that further research should be done to better understand how diets like high-fat diets can influence chronic pain within humans. Dr. Samir Morali, obesity medicine specialist with UT Health Houston and Memorial Hermann, Texas, not involved with this study, noted a few areas for continued research. He said, additional studies measuring changes in the microbiome inflammatory markers, and pain based on dietary differences that compare established surrogates for a Western diet, a whole, plant, a whole food plant-based diet, and a controlled diet could help further clarify the relationship between dietary composition and pain and inflammation. While this study is a step in the right direction, there are several gaps in translating the findings from rodents to humans to derive any important clinical implications. Here's my issue with a statement like that. For years, people have been doing lab tests with mice and transferring their findings to humans. The majority of our lab tests are done on mice. So, if a finding like this comes up, you're going to say it is not conclusive enough to say, hey, let's look at our diets. Because these mice are showing signs of, of problems as a result of this high-fat diet. So, chances are, us human beings are experiencing some of those same issues. And according to Pat, some people with, the, with type A blood types are susceptible to inflammation. So if you have a type A blood type, there are certain foods that actually work well with you. There are foods that work well with different blood types. So know what works for you. But at the same time, ask the question. How high in fat are these foods? And the type of fat that they're high in, is it the type of fat that includes or is rich in your omega-3s and 6s? Are they contributors of LDL or HDL, your good cholesterol or your bad cholesterol? What is it that you're getting from these foods? As evidence builds about the potentially harmful effects of high-fat diets, those following these eating patterns may wish to exercise caution. It is generally a good idea to work with healthcare professionals and nutrition, nutrition experts to develop a diet plan that best suits your needs, especially if you have a medical condition. Now, if you don't have a medical condition, chances are you're going to develop one if you have a high-fat diet. I'm just saying, a balanced diet is the way to go. And if you have a high-fat diet, I'm assuming that you also have a high, um, high activity lifestyle. So you get to burn this energy and get to burn off this fat. As a rule of thumb, for fat intake, the dietary guidelines for Americans from 2020 to 2025 recommends 
that less than 10% of your, calo your calorie intake should come from saturated fats. Overall, a moderate approach to fat consumption may be recommended. As with most things in nutrition, any extreme is going to have a consequence. Very low fat diets may result in excess carbohydrate intake and inadequate absorption of fat soluble vitamins, your A's, your D's, your E's, and your K's, which also can lead to health complications. Dr. Simmons said there should be further research on acceptable ranges of fat intake that do not increase systemic inflammation which is increasing chronic pain or elevating saturated fat intake, while also not going to a very low fat diet that could lead to malabsorption of vitamins or hormone disruption. Again, with everything, there needs to be some balance. So, whereas... Excess saturated fats is going to cause problems. You don't want to go overboard and cut off fats altogether because now you're leading yourself into not absorbing your essential vitamins A, K, D, and E. Here's a problem. Some of the foods that we're consuming already don't have enough of these vitamins. So, you're going to remove all the fat from your diet in, in an effort to fix what you've been doing. So you've gone to the extreme and now running into malabsorption issues. Things you don't want happening. So consult a nutritionist. Consult a doctor that you trust that is a general practitioner consult with someone who has gone through it and come through it you know they've had the experience where they had bad diet they made bad diet choices and suffered as a result of it and then they changed their lifestyle and have been benefiting ever since they did so what did they change and how are they sticking to it and what happened when they made that change it's good to talk to people that 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 have these stories because we can't make all the mistakes that are out there in the world we can't make them all ourselves sometimes we have to learn from others and it it, it may benefit us especially in times like these where we don't have to expose our body to unnecessary pain and discomfort and dis-ease when we can learn from someone else's mistake why would you want to put yourself in that position so in an effort to live a healthier 2023 than you did in 2022 read labels get familiar with the types of fat and their function get familiar with your fat intake levels that are healthy or even tolerable get familiar with the nutrients and vitamins that are in your food of choice and make a difference start making a change that way you get to save some money because you're not spending all you have on medical bills and prescriptions because what now you have made your medicine be your food and your food is your medicine now here comes another musical transmission as we get into musical therapy, we kick it off with Marta Dread featuring President Brown. The track is called No to Monsanto. Say we're living in a cruise 
push of time Mother Nature in serious decline Not to mention the war and crime Millions of people in need You're the one said More people than we can feed Couple that with their corporate greed Monopolizing the food we eat Time for the people to see Some sell you want a 
already Some in the process Keep your head in this far And check your friends them both sex Mentally and steady Enough for them under stress All the thing for them belly White squad mindset Not gone down many But I only few here So busy for them selling Information they must share Then get a one class And a piece of food for fear Sell your out to the dark See them there? But I no semi friend But souls are not trust no ones Sell your own friend up there Yes, they won't let them my powers Watch you wait My country don't flow as Wolf in a shake, blood in blood a coward No, we no friend God, you bless you with the powers No shadow of the dark We have fit to be not the hours Watch you wait My country don't flow as Wolf in a shake, blood in blood a coward Fearful of them, head the devil, them go about you Send your out for face of bread, remember, send me warn you I know every man that dread is a rasta mm-hmm. Illusion is real, but it no real Easy. Remember what you think is what you feel Check it Pussy cat, I try to take the lion mail Imagine Rub a sword, come a pose up like a spell But I no say me friend But sword, John, no stress powers Send your out for not a cat Real life. No, I find a place to rest where trade winds flow. Up in at the hills where herb trees grow. Eat a liquor grind. I fall in front. Eat a food and sell him for my friend. It all go red when the fire dash in on me head. All him fled room for the bed now. So I shed no call the bed room of his friends. So
Babylonian way round. You ever let down your guard? This is music from Arajanai. It's called Don't Let Down Your Guard. No, no, no. Living your eyes in hypocritic armatas, hypocrisy rules, but overshadowing the truth. Fighting this battle mentally and physically, this segregation is us from rallying the truth. Look all around you, there's a war going on. It's all the rich oppress the poor, and this I just cannot ignore. Press for the mark and keep your eyes on the goal. It is in every trouble that we regain full control. I'm not you ever let down your car. And it don't matter what they did and say, no. you ever let down your car. Stop living your eyes the Babylonian way, no. you ever let down your car. We burn now the Edens like every day. A very good night to you, Pat. Let down your guards. No, 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 no. Pleasant dreams. We'll catch up tomorrow, yeah? Nothing they can do to stop the movement of time. Transformation is a change in the weather. So the energy is off and so it's not getting no better. Running around as if they are the creators of it all. It won't be long before popping and fall. Crumbling down. So what they eat and say, no. you ever let down your guard? Stop living your life the Babylonian way, no. you ever let down your guard? We want no the Eden flag every day, no. you ever let down your guard? No, 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 no. You get caught up and get caught up now. The Twiggerific one. Twiggy. So we don't fall in their sinking sand. Yeah, yeah. It's called Never Let Us Down. David from our Goliath. Give us the weapon to keep them quiet. So no, we could keep on proving. And no cause, no riot. Sing it.
music from Andalik. We'll talk about some diabetic loving. It's called Sugar Lips. Girl, I want you to be mine. Conversations in the dark. Movies that we both already seen. I ain't even looking at the screen, it's true. I've got my eyes on you. And you say that you're not alone. You get hung up on your flaws. But in my eyes, you are perfect as you are.
in your days have seemed so hard My company you should go My love is everywhere you are I'm never gonna change you yeah. I'm always gonna say you say you So you won't make me break you I won't break your heart Slim, working on the track Ali, featuring Chris Alexander. It's their rendition of Do You Love Me. Listen how Chris Alexander does write this rhythm, man.
Getting all caught up in the love web. The sound of Mark U. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in tonight. This is how we bounce out of this musical therapy segment of Healthy Love tonight. I want to thank all my affiliates, One Harmony Radio, and IE Radio, Island Worldwide. Reggae Pulse, the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. I truly appreciate love each and every one of you. Those locked in on Zeno FM, much love. PEMGTV.com. Blessings. Thank you, each and every one, for tuning in. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for sharing. Speaking of contributions, do remember go to the website, click on the little donate button, and make your contributions to the running and the continuing of this broadcast on kevinstew.com. As we part company, do remember to look out for members of your community. Remember that uh, everybody that you pass on the bus, the plane, the boat, or the train, or the walk, ride, or drive, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today because you never know who's going to do something good for you tomorrow. My name is Kevin Stew. This is all I like to do to you, for you, and with you every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday right here. KevinStew.com and affiliates. We're back here tomorrow. Real talk. Closing out the night shift week. The same time, 10 p.m. Right here, KevinStew.com. We're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. Y'all take care. Be good. Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world. If you can't be good, be good at it. Until we meet again, enough love. Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment.